happy view. Let's bring in Alan Small, a senior investment advisor at IA Private Wealth. He joins me on the desk. You were listening to Paul. That's a dog's breakfast of things that we are worried about for the Canadian banks. But you got to put money to work. What are you doing with the banks? Well, I, I think they're a buy, actually. I, I think that if you have patience, you know, you don't need your money in the next month or two. I think you can buy the banks here. And you know what Paul says about the macro. Everybody's nervous about the macro. What does that mean? Interest rates. Interest rates have been coming down over the past, uh, let's call it, month or so. If the uh, central banks tell us in the next few weeks that they're not going to be raising interest rates, perhaps we go into the new year, yields can come down, especially in the U.S., on the 10-year, the 2-year. And I think that could actually be the stimulus or the, the one thing that can kickstart uh, I think people getting excited and seeing growth again, which is what the banks need. They need to see this economy start to at least level off. And if we are going to see maybe peak expenses for this quarter, which a lot of people are calling for, then next year could be an opportunity. And if you get in right now with yields, you know, we mentioned Scotiabank uh, you know, coming out tomorrow with earnings, 7% dividend yield, CIBC over 6%, even TD and Royal paying 4.5%, 5%. These are yields we haven't seen in a long time. I hear so many people talk about that opportunity. Let's let's assume yields hang out here. Maybe they go a little bit lower, and yet they don't include financials in the basket can, that can outperform. They'll say, "We'll buy utilities, buy telcos," but financials. I mean, we're just now going to be feeling the effect on the consumer of higher interest rates. It's not going to filter into the banks when it comes to, you know, appetite for taking on loans, et cetera. Yeah, you know, again, I always say interest rates rule, you know, rule the show, right? And so if we can see interest rates, you know, at least peak out here and not go higher, I think any individual or investors that have a longer term horizon, I don't mean 10 years, I mean if you don't need money in the next few months, I think over the next 12 months, we're going to see some good things. Mm. When you, you know, I, I know there was, a, I think, a caller, Paul said uh, earlier on the show this morning, that came in and said they've owned banks for so long and they haven't moved anywhere. Well, that is true. Over the last two years, banks have done nothing. Yep. And when you look at banks, when they've had that, I guess, underperformance over that period of time, the next 12 month period, over our outperforms. So I think there's a lot uh, on your side. So you're right almost now. thinking about banks as as a trade where we're sort of uh, conditioned to view them as sort of a long term buy and hold. Um, talk to me about that. Yeah, I think you can pick up some growth and income while mm -hmm. you wait over the next 12 months. Again, you're seeing these uh, these shares trading at lows we have not seen in a while. The average PE for Canadian banks is just over nine times right now, normally well over 10 times. So everything is already priced in. And if you believe that, and if you believe the consumer can stay strong, which many people believe they can, look at the Shopify numbers, the Amazon numbers that they were saying this morning, I think banks can weather the storm. And if you get in today, be that contrarian investor, buy when those are fearful, I think it makes sense over the next 12 months. And are you buying it as a basket or are you being selective maybe in some of those most beaten up names? You know, the most common refrain is, I love Canadian banks with U.S. exposure. And then you look at the best performing banks, EQB, Canadian Western Bank, National Bank, the most domestic of the domestics have been the ones that outperformed this year. Yeah, good question. And, and to me, I think it just <clears throat> depends on what you're looking for. If you're an investor that's looking for more income, maybe you go with a Scotia. If you're looking for more growth, I actually would be a contrarian and go into TD right now, even though they've been downgraded recently. So I think overall, it really just depends on, as an investor, what you're looking for, more income, more growth, or a bit of both. It also seems at a time where we uh, laud the Canadian banks for their diversification. Certainly it's helping, but they're challenged on all of the fronts, right? Capital markets is challenged, expenses are challenged, U.S. market is challenged. All these things that are supposed to be offsets are challenged. Absolutely. And so we're going to need to see, as I, as I said, as we get interest rates leveling off or coming down, a lot of people calling for interest rate cuts by mid-year next year. I think once again, you will start to see things start to pick up, like capital markets, just growth in general. People will be willing to go out and borrow money again. You don't really hear small businesses borrowing a lot of money right now. Interest rates are just way too high. So you mentioned that underperformance, you know, worse can be first uh, next year. 
What does that mean for tech, which has obviously led, like would you use tech as a source of funds to redeploy in other areas of the market? Are you still hanging on? Yeah, you know, I own a lot of tech. Uh, that was one of the names uh, or one of the sectors I came into as a contrarian last year, beaten up this year. It's been the, the best performer. I think you can trim profit and move some of those profits into areas like bank, like retail, like pharma, some of the other areas that haven't shared in the profitability. We know the Magnificent Seven have made up, what, something like 73% of the growth of the S&P 500 this year. So there are a lot of gains there to move around to other areas. Retail is interesting. How are you screening for opportunities there? You know, we talk about Black Friday, Cyber Monday. We're trying to figure out who are the winners, who are the losers. Again, you want to be a contrarian, in my opinion. So you want to look at a Target versus a Walmart. You want to look at a Nike, which, in my opinion, has been down because of what's going on in China. There are slow growth coming out of COVID. I think a name like Nike makes sense. Hmm. And they actually had some good earnings this past quarter. But a name like Target, I had a, a client question me the other day saying, why Target? Why not Walmart? Walmart. And the answer is, well, Walmart's at a high, Target's at a low. You're looking at a stock that trades at half its highs from a few years ago. And Target is starting to come back. They're starting to, to, to I guess, make the ship a little bit better again. They're going to reduce it. They're reducing inventories. A lot of good things happening at Target, but just starting out. And as an investor, that's where you want to be. Yeah, I like these contrarian calls. Um, we got a notable call today on the railway stocks. Deutsche Bank downgrading for a bunch of reasons. Caution on the Canadian consumer valuation. How do you think about the rail stocks right now? Rail stocks are tough, right? And if this economy continues to <coughs> slow, which obviously a lot of people are predicting, rail stocks will be affected, whether it's uh, from commodities or just overall in general. And so, yeah, you know, it's tough to look at a name like CN or CP, trading not the cheapest names right That's now. Right. Yeah. PEs are, are relatively high. But again, they always have PEs at that level. So I think you want to wait a little bit on the rails to see a bit of a turnaround in interest rates, a bit of a turnaround in the growth story. And maybe those are names you get into later on.